Stop in Hastings in uh, about three minutes. So in that case, we better uh, drop our flops and start our descent. Aren't you the guy that's never happy unless we're clicking along? That's me, Skipper. Only this is submarine weather. And how would it look if we ran into a well? <laughs> There's another town here. It looks bigger, at least the print looks bigger. Called Sparrow Falls. That's about 20 minutes away. What comes after Sparrow Falls? You get about two hours of desert. What's the matter with Sparrow Falls? You ever been there before? No. So? Something ever tell you not to do something? Yeah, my conscience, but I try never to listen to that. Some inner voice says, just keep going. Crazy, huh? Well, that's when I'd stop, right in the middle of Sparrow Falls, and I'd get out, and I'd walk around. In the rain. In the rain, and I'd yell, now what, Mr. Inner Voice? And that's when you'd get hit by the whale. <laughs> <laughs> Forgiveness of God is unconditional. What man has been, God can cleanse if that man truly repents. Only when we are seized with the certainty that we have been forgiven can the fire of God's love burn within us and light our way in the darkness. This is the greatest experience that can happen to a man. It transforms everything. Then we discover the strengthening angels of the Lord that are all around us. And where do we seek these angels? Here, brothers, sisters. Here, in this word of God. Here. If we believe, we can come to know the angel of pardon, the angel of peace, the angel that keeps the gates of heaven. One who can testify is Sister Evelyn. Sister Evelyn. As you can. Please keep going. Mommy! Mommy! I prayed that whatever was calling to your mother would leave her in peace, but it hasn't. Mommy! 
When a rider relinquishes herself to the bolting horse, there's nothing to be done. Nothing but wait. Keep on praying. Anybody got a cold? That bad? No. Me, I like girls in the natural state, but uh, my buddy here, Todd, uh, he likes them calmed out. Hooray for Todd. Girls are supposed to be calmed out. Hey, is that radio work? Yeah, you want to listen to the Russian dogs barking in outer space? Look, maybe you two can sit here and chit-chat all night, but me, I got to know things like, uh, who are you? What is this jazz? What is this thing you're wearing? Where are you going? What do you want from our lives? Where did you dig him up? Him? Oh, I just carry him along to ask the questions. Huh. That's because we both like the answers. Oh. Oh, who am I? I'm a gypsy. I run away because I don't want to grow up to become a fortune teller. Where am I going? From pillar to post. What do I want from you? A full tank of gas and as much distance from back there as I can get. You're thinking maybe she's dangerous or something. Maybe she's carrying a gun. You want to search her? Why do I look like a policewoman? Where are you headed? West and then north. Doesn't that tie you down? No, we uh, don't follow any schedule. We just go. Right now, what we need is some food and a drink. Especially a drink. You know, we could have left you back there on the road like a wet Persian rug. I've been stepped on before. Oh, self-pity. Oh, I can't even spell, Uncle, let alone cry it. I just face the facts. The world split up into two camps. Them that buy and them that get bought. You know, I smell smoke. Old grudges may be burning. You know, you and I could get to be a danger to each other. Buzz, up ahead, can you make it out? Still have that premonition? My psychic geography was about 20 miles off. I had a hunch something was going to happen, but it happened in Hastings, not in Sparrow Falls. My inner man thanks your inner man. Now let's find someplace where we can stop and eat, where all those truck drivers do, and then we'll ask the owner where he eats. But there's a better place in the next town for dinner. Oh, no, that's two hours away. We could make time stand still if you wanted to. Look, baby, I don't like aggressive women. Please don't stop in Sparrow Falls. Why not? I'll tell you why we're going to stop. First of all, we're thirsty. Second, we're hungry. Third, if we don't get you in some dry clothes, you'll catch a cold. And fourth, we're going to find a bus station and deposit you in it. Because this is a two-seater. Remind me never to dance with you. You not only like to lead, you step all over other people's feet. shaking all over. So you got the chills already. You better come in with us. We'll try and find you some dry clothes. Now you get your food and your drink. Forget about the clothes, huh? I'll wait for you here. Please hurry. Passing through, Sheriff. We left our shooting arms outside. Eastern kids, huh? Yeah, all around the town. I can tell from his accent. I'm good at accents. Tell any man I've ever met right where he's from. Just let me hear five or six words, and I can tell every time. Il vous mirerait ou serait très fâche triste. 
<laughs> Have a drink, Sheriff. New York. <laughs> hey, Sheriff, doesn't anybody ever eat in Sparrow Falls? Not after six o'clock. Why can't we get some clothes for a girl? You got one without clothes? We got caught in the rain. She's outside in the car. Stores close after six, too. Everything closes up at six, huh? That way to you. Hey, Terry. Got a couple of smart city kids for you. Uh, do you think you could rustle us up a couple of steaks? Rare. Our steaks either come straight or with soda. Montana, is that your name? Not everybody has a state named after them. Would you open that window, please? Oh, look at it now. Daniel says it's a measureless blackboard. Stars of punctuation marks put there by the angels kept after school writing God's name 500 times. Thank you for helping me. I don't deserve it. I'm not even doing 50. All right, come on out with your hands in the air. All right, out. Sheriff, don't you remember us? Yeah, the smart set from Big Town. All right, turn around. Come on, turn around. Feet apart. Lean forward, hands on the car. All right, you, do the same. Welcome home, Lottie. Do you mind if someone lets us in on it? Oh, worry, you're in. Over your head. Okay, Tommy, you'd ride in with this one. I'll take east side, west side with Lottie and me. Come on, march. Sit here and give us a lowdown, huh? <laughs> yeah, she won't say anything. All night long, she just stared right back at the sheriff and said nothing. Except that those two young fellas that are with her, they just picked her up. Oh, come oh, on. Oh, no, wait a minute. The sheriff confided in me. She'll confess. Hey, Lottie! What do you say I smuggle myself in jail and keep you company, huh? <laughs> How about it, Lottie? <laughs> 
If you don't play ball, little lady, I could maybe just let you loose. Just open this cage and set you free. Those are old friends out there, Lottie. They all got a very special interest in your case. You see, Al was the most popular guy in town. And he left a lot of friends. Yes, sir, a lot of friends. Look, Sheriff, I know enough about the law to know that she doesn't have to say anything. Look, son, I got all the time there is. Here, let me show you something. See here? January the 19th. Eight months back. Eight months since she killed Al. You think she could stay away? No, sir. They all come back. Sooner or later, they all come back. Like salmon gotta swim upstream. They gotta come back. Okay, Tommy, you can turn them two loose. We'll stay. Now look, boy. Sparrow Falls takes care of its own. You drove her in, no more, no less. Now you drive yourself out. Is there something we can do? Sure. Next time a girl tells you there's a better place for dinner down the road, listen to her. Goodbye, boss. Todd. Look, um, we feel, uh, there's got to be something we can do. Yeah. Keep going west, then north. You gotta get yourself in the right frame of mind for this. For instance, you've seen how it is around here, the opening day of the deer season. All the boys with their rifles all cleaned and oiled and their new fur caps. Just champing to shoot themselves that first deer. <laughs> That's a feeling only a man gets to feel. Now you can taste it. It's like biting down on a penny. But there's that other feeling, the other side of the penny. What the deer feels. Oh, that's got to be like a, well, like cotton to mouth. A whole mouthful of cotton choking you. That's what you feel now, Lottie, ain't it? We got plenty in common. Lottie Montana. Don't do that. He wasn't expecting that. Surely you must realize he was expecting something. I mean, after what he said, maybe he wasn't expecting it just that way, but uh, well, that's life. You'll go along with that, won't you?
This is where it happened, Lottie, remember? There was a storm that night, like last night. Thunder and lightning. Your kid was sleeping in the other room and you were here. Turn around! All right, my laddie, come to call. All right, my Al. How about it, laddie? Ain't that how it happened? I waited a long time to hear you say yes. I rented this place for eight months. I kept it just like it was that night. Because I knew you'd be back. And I knew I'd get to hear you say yes. Say it, Lottie. Let me hear you say it. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Why are you crying? <laughs> I don't know where there is, little lady. All the crying there is. What do you think I feel? Losing a fine boy like Al? Losing my chick brother? To trash like you? Do you really think she killed somebody? They think so. Why doesn't she say something? Admit it, deny it, something. Think back, Buzz. She didn't really tell us anything last night. You kept asking her all those questions, she just talked between the lines, remember? She has a way of not answering right out. Just keeps looking at you like... like she's straining to hear something that hasn't been said. I don't see how we can just drive away and forget her, do you? Why not? Who is she? What's she to us? Never knew a kid with so many friends. All the wrong kind. You suppose if we went back to where we found her, we could find some of her people, the family, or somebody that might take over and try to help her? She was running last night, remember? You don't run from friends, not the right kind of friends. What do we do? attorneys in town. They're both a lot older than you are, Mr. Crown. We felt this was a young man's problem. More precisely, a young woman's problem. Well, I'm sorry, but uh, at this point, there doesn't seem to be much anybody can do for Lottie Montana. Eighty years ago, she'd be hanging from a lamppost by now. It's in our day. It'll take the county a little bit longer than that, but not much longer. The sheriff has friends in, well, I believe the correct phrase is, uh, influential places. So what? So you don't tie leaves onto a dead tree, gentlemen. Look, if she did kill a man, she must have had a good reason or been driven to it. Why? Because she's attractive? Because she has dark hair and insolent shoulders? What's that got to do with it? Well, what do you know about her? I mean, really know. Now, you two... What you've told me, you're living life on a wing. Every day is a wonderful fantasy. Well, that's fine as far as it goes. It makes life seem uh, more endurable. For me, I've stopped running. I've faced up to the fact that uh, most people are victims of their own low standards, no matter where you look. I've learned to think the worst of people. Particularly myself. I haven't been wrong yet. Now take Lottie Montana. 
She's got a couple of nice-looking young fellas like you completely taken in. You're willing, you're even anxious to overlook one irrevocable fact. She did stab a man to death in her apartment earlier this year. That wasn't proved. Then why did she run? Why in the middle of the night did she take her young daughter and disappear completely these last few months, despite an intensive police search? Now you two, who know nothing about her, and very little about the circumstances, complete strangers, you walk in here and insist that I take the case. I'm sorry we bothered you. Now where are you going? To find an attorney for the defense. Did you uh, hear me say that I wouldn't defend her? I just wanted you to know what you're up against. Uh, I'm no Clarence Darrow, but... Uh, well, we can walk to the city jail, gentlemen. It's one of the advantages of practicing law in a small community. Tell him I'm not in. You heard her. Let me talk to him. Lottie. They're saying you confessed. Is it true or did someone beat it out of you? There's a lot of things I don't like. The thing I dislike most is saying goodbye twice. But I'll say it. Goodbye. Twice. My name is Richard Crown, Miss Montana. I'm an attorney. I'd give you my card, but uh, we don't use cards in Sparrow Falls. These gentlemen have asked me to defend you. I'd like to talk to you alone. I can appreciate the emotional strain you're under. Suppose I come back, say, uh, later this afternoon. She knows it's over, Mr. Crown. She come apart for good, like a wet blotter. Now and then we get one like her. They make model prisoners because they're already dead and they know it. Everyone gets his day in court, Sheriff. She's a long way from dead. I'll be back, Miss Montana. Now, you men move away from here before the sheriff comes out. This ain't no circus. The hell already black for Al's man. What is it? They want to see Lottie. You see her when she comes to trial. And that'll be as fast as we can impanel a jury. Now, I want you all out of here. Come on. 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 Why don't you wait outside, Todd? Why don't we both go outside? Look, uh, Crown said we didn't know enough about Lottie. And so? So I'll do some checking. What checking? Look, why don't you wait for me at Crown's office? It won't be long. Yeah. Hmm? Forget it, son. I'd break every bone in your head. Yeah? Maybe. What do you think, Tommy? I think maybe it'll clear the air a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I see it. That was your idea, kid, remember? If that don't hold up, I'll say you jumped me and I had to defend myself. Okay. I don't care how you cut it up. I'm going to teach you not to hit girls. Yeah. 
the next slot. <laughs> you much, Tommy, but I never knew why before. You're an alley cat, jumping a man from behind like that. He was cutting you up. I've been cut up before and I'll be cut up again, but I'll never hit a man from behind. All right, put him in a cell back there until he gets around. And then keep out of here till I kick him out of town. Because if he finds you before he goes, I'm going to let him teach you a lesson. Patching. Yeah? How's your nose? Busted. Sorry. It's been busted before. How's your head? I think he let some air in. Sit down. Uh, you turn loose awful hard. But I'm the same way, so I figure you and me, we can talk man to man. She ain't worth defending. No more than the dog you have to whistle for. Came in here to Sparrow Falls four years ago with a cardboard suitcase and a scrawny kid. Came in here to pick the peach crop. You know, one of the migratory workers. After that first season's crop had been canned and shipped, she stayed on. Got herself a job in the Silver Dollar Club waiting tables. With every man in town, Wearing his Sunday best on Saturday night, ringing her doorbell. It started bad and ended worse. Yeah. Well, that's cold water there. You soak that towel in it and wrap it around your neck. It all helps. Oh, well, by the way, your friend's waiting outside. You want me to tell him anything? Yeah, tell him I'll be out in a minute. Thanks. Daniel, last night when you looked out of the window, 
you looked up at the sky and you said, Daniel said that's God's blackboard, only for angels to write on. Who's Daniel? Where's your daughter? Safe. And your husband? Ancient history. And Daniel's not your husband. Oh, no. I mean, why'd you kill a man? Who'd believe me if I told? Todd, me. I got the lumps to prove it. You ever seen a bullfight? No. I did once in Tijuana. Made me sick, but I figured out why. I identified with the bull. Hey, Toro. I'm Toro, that's me. Men making passes. Two Veronicas, three Ricortes. But they all dream of a bull who'll charge in straight. A bull on wheels. One who won't hook or falter. One it will charge in straight for the kill. But sometimes Toro gets the matador. Just like I got Al. Any more questions? Yeah. Why did you kill him? He wouldn't leave me alone. Thought he had a private claim on me. There's a time and there's a place, but as far as Al was concerned, there never was a time. That's no excuse. He broke in on me. He was drunk. He came in after me, right into the bedroom, right in front of my daughter. I fought him. I broke away. I ran to the living room. I grabbed the scissors. Well, if that's the way it was, why did you run away? Why didn't you come back and tell your side of the story? My word against his dead body? They'd have lynched me. Not if you had a witness. Where was your daughter when all this was happening? She was asleep. During all that ruckus? Now she knows nothing. She saw nothing. Yeah? You come back here! Daniel Wilde will welcome the people of River Rock into the kingdom of heaven Wednesday and Thursday nights at 7.30. River Rock, we passed through there last night just at dark. This explains much to me. As it was about eight months ago, I was holding services in Hastings, and there was a storm, like last night. And after all the congregation had left, two people remained behind, sitting just about there. A woman, Sister Evelyn, and a child, Teresa. I remember the way they were clutching each other's hands. And she told you her name was Evelyn? Evelyn Jones. But you tell me it's Lottie Montana. She told me she'd been deeply moved by my sermon and that she'd decided then and there to consecrate her life to Christ. She begged me to let her join our group of Christian workers. This was not uncommon. If it were, I wouldn't feel that my work was succeeding. So I agreed to take her in and she worked diligently. But she always seemed to be under some kind of cloud. After a few weeks, I asked her if she didn't wish to speak to our congregations and tell them how she found Christ. The idea seemed to terrify her. She said no. She wanted only to work in the background, as she has all these months, until last night, when she asked me if she could speak to the congregations. She said that she'd come to a decision. She wanted to go before God with witnesses and tell them what was in her heart. So I introduced her. Suddenly she ran out into the storm. And we drove her straight to jail. Reverend. Mr. Parks, thank you. I'll bring her back in just a moment. 
Tracy, these are the two gentlemen that came by last night when your mother went outside. Mommy wasn't in an accident, was she? No, Teresa. But you were. If you were with her, then she was hurt too. She's, she's fine. Missing you, but uh, just fine. Now, Teresa, you heard me say what lies are and what truth is. Truth is a candle against the darkness, and lies... ...are the breath of the devil, blowing out the candle of truth. You wouldn't tell a lie, would you, Teresa? Your mother has told us about what happened that night in Sparrow Falls with the man. All about the accident. She did see it. Tell me the truth, Teresa. Did you see the man? Yes. I saw two men. Two men? The one with Mommy, and the one outside in the hall, watching. <laughs> told you. And you let them see Teresa. Yes. Why? You had no right. You left her? She told us about another man, Lottie. A witness. There was no other man. That's part of her nightmare about that night. Well, both those young men took the sheriff with them, and they've gone off to do some checking. There couldn't have been another man. She said he was on the outside, in the hall. I didn't see anybody with him. You weren't seeing very clearly that night, were you? Oh, God. God, forgive me. I, I took Teresa out of there. I made a promise never to talk about anything she'd seen that night. I caught the bus. I, I passed your tent and something told me to go in there. I got off at Hastings and walked back in the rain, and I told you I'd been converted. You were, Lottie. Not that night, but last night, when you asked if you could speak to the congregation. I meant to go back to Sparrow Falls and give myself up. First, I wanted to tell the people that something had happened, that I, that I wasn't afraid anymore, that I could look out and up. Then the thunder came, and, it, and I looked up, and I, and I saw not the face of God, but... The rain like the tap water when I tried to wash the blood off the scissors. And I knew I wasn't good enough for God. That I had lost him. So I ran away. Lottie, you've heard me say that the forgiveness of God is unconditional. Jesus did not forgive the woman of the street who bathed his feet in her tears in the house of the Pharisee. He said, thou art forgiven. Not I forgive, but thou art forgiven. The state of her mind and the ecstasy of her spirit are proofs of what had happened within her. It's only by being forgiven that we can come to know what it is to love God. Love him now, Lottie. Reach out for him. God, in whose wisdom we learn the meaning of life, and in whose love we find the strength to live, help us to seek Thee in the morning of our years, so that we may not lose Thee in the evening of life. We thank Thee for the laughter of little children, for the dreams of youth, and for the hopes of age. Help the lowliest of us to feel that each life is precious in thy sight. Help the lowliest of us to know that someone cares. Make us good soldiers of thy Son, Jesus Christ, so that in his service we may help to win a better world here 
and live with him hereafter. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The sheriff just double-checked his brother's timetable the night he was killed. He left a silver dollar at 10 o'clock. He left with you, Mr. Crown. And you stayed with him? Straight up. That's how I want it, Dick. We spoke to your wife. She remembers the night very distinctly. You came home late. You said you'd been drinking and you walked out into the country because you never wanted her or the kids to see you drunk. You went up there with him, didn't you? And you saw it happen. And you ran just like Lottie ran. Except nobody was chasing you. Nobody. Only the worst hunter of them all. My conscience. That's true, Sheriff. I did go up there with Al. He said no little peach picker was ever going to turn him down. And she wouldn't let us in. So Al kicked the door open. By that time, I was too drunk to move. I was too numb to even think clearly. So I stayed out in the hall. I guess I was already a little ashamed. But I saw it happen. He started to drag her toward... Well, she kept fighting him. Then he knocked her down. And that's when she went for the scissors. There wasn't anything else she could do. He acted insane. He would have killed her. See, I love my wife and my two children. I love them so much and so protectively that I've been willing to destroy myself inside just to keep them out of it. How could I admit that I'd gone up there with Al to take part in what he had in mind without destroying them. How could I do that? I don't know, Mr. Crown. I don't know how you could do any of it, but you did. More important, what are you going to do about it now? When I accepted Lottie Montana's case this morning, gentlemen, I'd already made my decision. Even though I knew it meant it would be my last case. Coming, Sheriff? What can I say? Give me my comb back. Why don't you keep it as a reminder of us? Okay, Toro? Okay, Matador. What's with all the bullfight stuff? Oh, it's a family joke. <laughs> Goodbye, Lottie. Good luck. Executive Producer.